I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, March 21st, 1940. My father was a physician and my mother was a homemaker. During World War II, my father was stationed at various places in the United States. The first place was Rockford, Illinois. Then we were transferred to Greenville, Mississippi, where my sister was born. Then to Seymour, Indiana, where my brother was born. And finally to Panama City, Florida, when the war ended. I knew that there was something, I don't remember uh, Pearl Harbor, but I knew that there was something going on. I knew there was a war. Um, most of the men that I saw were in uniform. I knew that we weren't living back home where my grandparents and, and the rest of my extended family lived. So I knew there was something going on. Um, the only time maybe I was a little bit afraid was um, when there were air raid warnings, blackouts, we would have to close the curtains and sit in the dark and maybe have a little flashlight. Although I don't think my mother um, made us anxious at all. I remember in, uh, don't remember much of Seymour, Indiana, except maybe a little bit on a porch. I was very young. My first real memory was in Greenville, Mississippi, the day my sister was born. I was two years and two weeks old. I remember my grandmother was there to take care of me while my mother was in the hospital and my father coming to the door in his uniform saying something to the effect that I had a brand new baby sister. I remember being taken care of by um, African -American, uh, an African-American woman there. I also remember sitting on a big bale of cotton on a wagon on the levee and I remember uh, someone explaining to me about the levee was to keep the Mississippi River uh, back. In Seymour, Indiana, I have one memory of being looking out from an upstairs bedroom to my father, waving to my father as he got into a car with other men in uniform to go to work. And I also remember visiting the base hospital when my brother was born. My mother was at the, at the base hospital. They were frame buildings with, uh, I think there was a screen porch, and my mother, I think, came out to the door of the screen porch. And uh, then I remember playing with some other children in Indiana. The final place where we were stationed was Panama City, Florida. And I remember looking across the bay, someone, one of my parents, pointing out to me, a ship that was being launched, and that was a big deal. The other thing I remember was catching, trying to catch lobsters or crabs, something in the ocean, in the shallow water. My parents brought them home. My mother cooked them and decided they there was something wrong with them, and so she threw them all out. I think there probably was nothing really wrong with them, but she wanted them. She wasn't sure about that. When the war was over, I remember there was a boogie-woogie playing on the radio. It was a shortwave radio that my father had. It was a big rectangular gray thing with lots of dials on it. They were playing a boogie-woogie. They interrupted that to announce that the war was over. I knew it was something good. It was something wonderful. We... It didn't take very long before we moved back to Cleveland, and I remember my father saying he got out while the getting was good, so there must have been some concern that maybe the war or the fighting would start again and they would be called back in or not, not be discharged. So we came back to Cleveland, and my father reestablished his medical practice that he had started in 1938 and only had uh, worked at for a couple of years before he was called into the Army. He, at first he was in the Army, and then it was the Army Air Corps. And when he was discharged, he was a lieutenant colonel in the Army Air Corps Medical Corps. And he came back to Cleveland in 1945. We lived in a rented farmhouse. Um, after staying with my grandparents for a short time, we lived in a rented farmhouse in Beechwood, which is now torn down. And by... September, 
we were in a house in South Euclid. I remember there being a vacant lot between our house and the house, uh, the next house. The woman who lived there had made a victory garden. The whole lot was filled with vegetables, a few flowers, and that didn't last very long after the end of the war. <laughs>